thank you so much, Kay, for being here and um, sharing something that you are heavily involved in because um, now you're a uh, minister to um, people that, um, that are survivors as well. Thank you for having me, Veronica. Yeah, I, um, I kind of feel like my life's mission has been not only to recover from ritual abuse, but also to serve other people that have, have come through abuse, to hopefully provide some hope and encouragement and um, help other people come out of the darkness into the light. And that's really my life's mission. Uh, the book that I wrote it was a long time in coming. It was not easy to write. Um, but I, I really, I wrote it because I felt like God wanted me to. And I felt like it was a testimony for Him. It was my sincere hope that it, it wouldn't glorify ritual abuse, but instead would glorify the Most High God and give people hope for their own healing. I also feel like part of my calling is to provide some education about ritual abuse and open the topic so people that are suffering can actually find some real answers. So um, the testimony was written about my life um, and it encompasses about the first 40 years of my life uh, and it, it does go into some detail. For some people it might be rather triggering if they haven't been able to do their own work but I feel like it was important to get it on paper. I felt like it was important to tell the story because God did miracles in my mm -hmm. life and I feel like if God can heal me, if God can do miracles in me, He can do that for other people. And one of the things I do as part of Restoration Gateway, not only is providing ministry for satanic ritual abuse survivors, but also training for other ministers so that uh, more effective ways to help those that are suffering can be made available to the public. Mm -hmm. Because unknown to many people, there's a um, millions of people in the United States that are um, would you call them survivors yet yeah, when they're still in torment? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the statistics back in 1990s when I started doing research on my own, my own healing recovery and I worked with, um, I called an organization called Monarch Resources, the Cult Awareness Network in Los Angeles and we asked them, my husband and I spoke with them and we said well how prevalent is this? How many people um, have a similar background to mine and they said about two percent of the population was their conservative estimate mm. well today the United States alone has over 300 million people and that says there are six million SRA survivors in the world today and one of the things that's so so difficult about ritual abuse is the abuse is so traumatic that often it creates amnesic barriers and dissociation. Mm -hmm. So people are suffering emotionally, mentally, physically with disorders, but don't really know why. Can you talk about Joseph Mengele? Absolutely. Um, some of the memories that I recovered involved uh, actual contact with Joseph Mengele. He was known as the Angel of Death at Auschwitz. He conducted thousands of experiments on, um, on the prisoners at Auschwitz, and he particularly liked twins to, to do horrible, horrific experiments. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that he conducted research for mind control at Auschwitz on the prisoners there. I believe that uh, he got out of Nazi Germany through the Vatican mm -hmm. and then went to Brazil. I also believe that he made his research available not only to other uh, doctors that practice mind control but also to the CIA. And it was at, at that time in history where uh, right after World War II where there was some competition in terms of military mind control with China and Russia. In Germany. Yeah, so the United States, um, they they had an enemy, yeah, with Germany, but they but their enemy um, was also Russia. And mm -hmm. so when they defeated Germany, they thought, hey, we could beat the Russians if we can get some of these basically evil people 
over to help us um, with some of the things that um, knowledge that they have and so they brought in you know somebody as evil and you know despicable as Joseph Mengele and um, which his mind control that what he taught affected you tremendously is that Absolutely. is was that the origin of mind control in royal bloodlines because you have a royal bloodline I believe mind control goes back for centuries. Mm -hmm. uh, in witchcraft, they've been practicing ways to control people for years, but it was perfected through, mm -hmm. I think, through the work of Joseph Mengele at Auschwitz. And mind control is one of the primary purposes behind the ritual abuse. It's to control, uh, to control a person so they become a slave. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of the United States and in terms of me, I became a mind controlled slave for the US government. I became a non-lethal military weapon because my mind was programmed and splintered into thousands of pieces that were programmed and taught uh, to do things um, for military purposes. Yeah, And a lot of people, the average person, they're just like, well that's nuts. Um, you know, I have, through interviewing people and just knowing people throughout the years, when you find somebody who has been into witchcraft, they absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt that these type of things happen, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in Wicca and different mm -hmm. um, levels of the occult. Mm -hmm. they, they know that things happen, that the average Christian, they're, they're clueless on. Um, uh, the, the power, you know, should be in the church, but the power is, um, is, is also, ha ha has been working, mm -hmm. you know, in the dark way in um, satanic um, circles. One of the things that, that was done was um, occult families were contacted through the U.S. military. Mm. Uh, occult families were contacted and some of the early programs were called Bluebird. The Nazi scientists came to America under Paperclip mm -hmm. and then under projects Bluebird and Artichoke they started uh, testing out the use of LSD, hypnosis, and other mind control elements. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to see if they could create something called a Manchurian candidate. So even the old movie and the old book by Richard Condon in mm -hmm. the 60s, you know, the Illuminati never does anything without actually putting it out there first. And so that movie was actually mm -hmm. a, a historical representation mm -hmm. of how mind control well, really started. Well, Hollywood is controlled by the Illuminati. Absolutely. Because they have the royal bloodline, they have a lot of money to do that. So. I mean, people need to watch out what they, they watch. Be careful what they watch because they're Absolutely. being um, programmed to think certain ways that certain things that should be wrong are right. I was at the gym yesterday, actually, and I'm working away on the treadmill, and I see an actual satanic ritual on the TV at 7 in the morning. Hmm. And they had a witchcraft show on, and they had the symbolism, and... The Lord said to me, will you stand against this? And so I stopped the machine and I went over to the management and I said, hey, I don't want to come to my gym and see a satanic ritual on the television in front of me. And they said, well, you know, we, we carefully do that at the corporate office and we don't want to offend anyone. And I said, well, this offends me, that mm -hmm. this is commonplace witchcraft on the television. What? What type of show was it? You don't have to name the show, but it was it like kind of a fun teenager show, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they were kind of like a Harry Potter, where kind of like and, that. And, yeah. and Harry Potter is is steeped with witchcraft. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they make it look fun. Right. So mm -hmm. that's how they always they always uh, attract the kids to mm -hmm. things. So um, okay. So in your book, you describe your everyday life. Mm -hmm. before these um, mind... Um, before I started to remember things. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was your life like? Before I discovered the abuse, uh, I was highly emotional and uh, really a troubled person, a lot of addictive behavior. I was very promiscuous. Uh, and I, I, I didn't know Christ until I was 20 years old. I didn't even realize that I had amnesia over most of my life. If um, you were to ask me 
you know, what, what was your childhood like, I could piece together some stories that made it sound like I remembered. But when I was really pressed to the task, uh -huh. I couldn't really remember very much of my life mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. So in my book, I tell the story of working with a therapist in California. And actually, my husband and I went to see her um, on behalf of one of our sons. And um, she threw a pillow just as an example of a couple fighting and I rolled up in a little ball on the floor and I was bawling hysterically for no apparent reason and she said um, you need to see me separately <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I worked with that particular counselor mm -hmm. for a couple of years and um, started to uncover what was behind mm -hmm. that, what mm -hmm. was causing me to curl up like a child on the floor mm -hmm. and sob. So uh, finally I began to find answers to mm -hmm. why I was having such a difficult time, why I was so emotional. I had terrible insomnia. I didn't understand why I couldn't sleep at night or why I was so protective of my children. And as uh, God began to reveal things and memories began to to come forward it all started to make mm -hmm. horrific sense now I want to just bring up because a lot of people um, a lot of us even myself you know has heard you know somebody they'll go see a counselor and all of a sudden they were raped or whatever they like the counselor put things in their head and all of a sudden they um, they believe it and um, although that probably does happen you know so the counselor can make more money or whatever um, create a problem. Um, there are many reasons why it, it that didn't happen in your case in many cases. In fact, a lot of people need to know that it, if they, Very it, it, it's very happens. Okay. Um, but you actually had some physical evidence from just regular doctors that were brought to you that you talk about in your book. Can you talk about some of the other some issues evidence. that came up? Yeah, besides mm -hmm. the counselor? Yeah, when I was 17, I was hemorrhaging and uh, it couldn't seem to stop hem hemorrhaging. And so I was sent to a Stanford specialist and he looked at me and he said, when did you have this baby? And I was incredulous and I, I, I said, what baby? What are you talking about? And he said, you don't remember? And I said, no. And he said, well, there's vaginal scarring here that indicates that you've had a baby. And actually, he said, we need to um, do a procedure to stop the bleeding as a result of your recent birth. And I was so shocked. I remember him saying it. And he, um, he sat me down in his office and he said, um, Kay, is your dad abusing you? What's going on at home? And I said, no, my, you know, nothing's going on. My dad wouldn't hurt me. Um, but clearly there was, there was evidence. And um, how old were you? 17. So you had a child when you were 17? Yeah, actually I had six children as a result of rapes and, um, and in, induced labor and birth for satanic rituals where my Be babies were mm -hmm. sacrificed. Between which, what years? Between about age 11 and 17, there were wow. six of them. And then after that, you started, began the process of becoming a Christian um, and getting help. I mean, it, it's a long story, but. Yeah, when I was 19, my father was dying of cancer and um, they actually put kind of a, a, what we would call today, a cult plant in my life. At my job, there was a man that took an interest in me. I believe he was sent by um, the family or the group. Uh, he was sent to um, take over for my dad as my handler. And he um, asked me to marry him several times. And then he said, and then when my father died, he said, will you marry me? And I felt this pressure that I needed to marry this man and settle down and have a family. So um, it was about a year after that that I found the Lord and God changed everything about my life and actually exposed this man for who he was. <laughs> 
there aren't too many outlets where you can hear in-depth spiritual issues alongside conservative politics where we can make a difference to those around us and our country. It's brought to you at a cost that's worthwhile, yet I'd like to do more. On 11thHourPolitics.com, you can buy books and videos that will advance this cause. There's delicious chanterelle tea containing vitamin D proven to dispel depression. We have an art gallery and options to produce your own commercial or have us do it for you, along with other projects. It's only through a co-op that things get accomplished. I hope you will join me in this mission.